is the Mistress Carrie Situation Report for June 10th, 2024. Your daily music headlines, industry info, and everything rock. The Offspring have announced their 11th studio album called Supercharged, arriving on October 11th. They also released the first single, Make It All Right. Dexter Holland saying in a press release, we wanted this record to have pure energy. From start to finish, that's why we called it Supercharged. From the height of our aspirations to the depths of our struggles, we talk about it on this record in a way that celebrates the life that we share and where we are now. Our single, Make It Right, is a great example of this because it talks about the people in our lives who make us feel strong when we're feeling low, our partners in crime who make us feel all right. The new Mind Games, The Ultimate Collection, has been released. The video for You Are Here has incredible, never-before-seen footage of John Lennon and Yoko Ono, filmed in July of 1968. At John's first major art show, You Are Here, to Yoko from John Lennon with Love, that happened at London's Robert Fraser Gallery. It's been paired together with a new ultimate mix of You Are Here from his 1973 album, Mind Games. Jay-Z's company Rock Nation has announced an initiative that will assist students with about $300 million in scholarships. The funding will give underprivileged kids in grades K through 12 the opportunity to attend prestigious private schools and various educational institutions across Philly. Rock Nation will look to spread awareness by hosting events running daily from June 10th through June 21st throughout the greater Philadelphia area. Those in attendance will have a chance to learn more about the PASS program, the Pennsylvania Award for Student Success, which is also known as Senate Bill 757. Coming up on Thursday, Jackass star Steve-O is set to celebrate his 50th birthday. And to mark the occasion, he's having Post Malone tattoo a penis on his face at Bonnaroo. Saying, quote, I'm getting my first face tattoo. Post Malone is going to tattoo a dick on my forehead. That's the plan, he said. The Fish fan who took a bong hit at the Sphere on 420 while attending the concert was temporarily banned from Madison Square Garden venues. The account on Instagram known as Acid Farts initially posted a video of the bong rip on 420 celebrating Fish's Sphere show who played four nights at the new mega venue. Acid Farts was promptly banned from all MSG venues including Madison Square Garden and Radio City Music Hall. Releasing a statement saying if you enter any MSG venues law enforcement will be contacted to ensure your expulsion and you will be subject to the penalties. Acid Fart said he had no regrets except for one, that he'll never see the Rockettes at Radio City Music Hall. A couple days later, MSG Entertainment shared a statement saying that he was not banned, saying, quote, there was a breakdown in our process due to a change in personnel, which resulted in a letter being sent inadvertently. Bon Jovi played a surprise five songs set in Nashville on Friday night. The intimate performance celebrated the grand opening of JBJ's, the new rooftop bar and restaurant owned by John Bon Jovi. It also came on the day that Bon Jovi released their 16th studio album, Forever. John Bon Jovi underwent vocal surgery in 2022 and has been enduring a long road to recovery ever since, recently confirming that he's unable to tour in support of the new album, saying that he's more than capable of singing again, but that two and a half hours a night, four nights a week would not be possible right now. Dan Donegan from Disturbed was asked in a recent interview if the band has already started working on a follow-up to 2022's album, Divisive. He said, quote, when we're out here on the road, we just have to switch gears. Right now, it's been focused on the tour and the shows and the production. I do have probably a thousand riffs on my phone because I'll just record stuff in that moment. I won't get married to it, though. It'll just be kind of put in the vault and I'll revisit it later. In a recent interview, Europe keyboardist Mick McCauley said, quote, we finally started writing songs seriously together again. So we finally sort of got into it. 
especially Joey, John, and myself. So the idea is to write songs as much as we can during the summer, although we have a lot of festivals to play, so it might not be that much. But then in the autumn, we're going to finish so that we can hopefully have songs for a new album and then record in the beginning of next year. Danny Carey from Tool has upped his stage attire. The band is now on their European and UK tour. In recent shows, he's been wearing an illuminated suit. The suit also seems to pay homage to the artwork of artist Alex Gray, a longtime favorite of the band. Atreyu are getting ready to celebrate the 20th anniversary of the band's 2004 sophomore album, The Curse, by performing the album in its entirety at the House of Blues in Anaheim, California, coming up on October 18th. In an interview at last month's Sonic Temple Festival in Columbus, Ohio, Brandon Soller from the band said, We've been really lucky to have a lot of big wins in our career. The Curse was, I think, our first big win as a band. I think it put us on the map. So you want to pay respect to that and you want to do something cool for the fans. And it gives you the opportunity to kind of reinvigorate people in the band. Tatiana from Ginger is commenting on the new material the band is working on, saying, quote, it's going to be different, first of all, because I feel that the music differs a lot. But they all have, not all of them, but half of them at least, have a similarity in them. They have a concept within without any lyrics. They still sound like they belong in one box. She went on to say, I feel like this has a flavor of the 19th century. It's very romanticism from the 19th century. And if you listen to it, you'll think, oh, you know, when you listen to Muse, you feel that it was inspired by a lot of classical composers, obviously. So our new music has this flavor. And I'm so excited. Howard University has announced it's cutting ties with Sean Diddy Combs, rescinding an honorary degree that was awarded to him and by disbanding a scholarship program in his name. Saying, quote, Mr. Combs' behavior as captured in a recently released video is so fundamentally incompatible with Howard University's core values and beliefs that he is deemed no longer worthy to hold the institution's highest honor. And 35 years after the release of their debut album, Skid Row, have released their first official live album and concert film. The collection is set to arrive on September 20th on CD and DVD and two vinyl albums and, of course, in digital forms. It's available for pre-order right now. Skid Row is previewing the set with a live video of the set opener, Slave to the Grind, that you can watch on their official YouTube. And that's your sit rep. For more details on all of the stories, check the links in the show notes of this episode. And don't forget to like, follow, and subscribe to the Mistress Carrie podcast. New full-length episodes come out every Wednesday. Episode 209 featuring Royal Lynn is available now.